I am now initializing in the second step my SC because I have told you SC will be initialized by default in a Spark shell but not in a Spark submit. So this I will run with the Spark submit and you have to initialize SC here okay and with the configurations you have already given. So now Spark context. So I'm initializing with a new keyword. New keyword is compulsory here. If, if you're not providing a new here, it will throw you error. And also I'm initializing a stream context also because I'm using a stream context. Okay. So I will I will tell you this later on. This configurations. How we in our uh, stream class because this is this is a um, we are going to discuss in a string class but the applications other configurations look similar okay I am getting data here in the form of string and then doing the map operation to get the specific value because it can it will provide you metadata information as well as your actual stream data also so at, at the second of uh, second of row, uh, second of column, it, it is providing you uh, data information. So I'm getting all of the data and putting here in the string row. So firstly, we want to see what is our data here. So let me show you. So audit, there are some audit logs which Which Spark, uh, which Hadoop is maintaining, okay? Which file is accessed by which service? Like Spark, so suppose my Spark service, Spark application, okay, have accessed Wikipedia dot that page some some time ago, right? So you can find that information in a audit logs and. How I have uh, provided in the stream. Let me show you. So I have used here Flume. So there, this is the location of my HDFS audit log, which is increasing right now. Okay, some probably multiple applications are running there. And they are accessing some files, then it will show me this kind of information. Okay. The timestamp, the information, okay, file system audit. That means it's a file system audit. And the specific file it is accessing. I'm creating, okay, it is creating some of log files in application history. Okay, with the permission, prototype RPC, remote processor call I'm using. So it is using RPC and communicating with uh, uh, each and other node. Suppose name node and that node also communicating with RPC. So this is my raw data I'm using here. And this I'm using initialized as a source and from there I'm providing my events data in the form of events to channel to the Kafka. And Kafka is ingesting that flume, uh, that HDFS audit events to the memory, in memory, because it is ingesting all of the stream to in memory to a specific topic, name is audit stream. And I have provided the server which RAM I'm using right now as a MAM cache name is BD01 that means current one okay so let me run it how it's work okay so this is your data let me firstly show you that again and 
I'm I'm filtering off firstly. I want UGIS is equal to Spark. That means a Spark application have accessed some of file. So I want to access that specific file only. So this one is accessed by the map RD. Okay, the map red. This one is a Spark map map red. Then OZ. So there are different different services are running for accessing some of files. And also command is equal to create. I want only that particular line which have that command equal to create and it should be non-empty. So this is important. How can I use this non-empty function to remove the null values? Now on this data I'm parsing specifically uh, I want the timestamp only suppose. Okay. This is a test application and I only, only want timestamp. Then it will print me a timestamp. That's it. So let me run it first. This is how can I run it? <coughs> Configuration file I provided, and the name also I provided. Now I have to check what stream I am getting in a Kafka. So this is a console consumer, okay. So Kafka have a producer and topic and consumer. Topic is a pipeline, producer is which is producing the data, consumer which is consuming the data. So consumer, the producer here is a flume, okay. And topic I have provided as audit hyphen stream, this one. And this consumer I'm using to check um, if I'm getting some stream or not. So currently I'm not getting any stream. Yeah, now I'm getting. So Uzi is doing some. Okay, MapRed, Spark. So this is a current stream. Okay, a current data, server data. See, 42, so you want. Probably there is a, some seconds, milliseconds of gap. Okay, now I want to run my application. Okay, so this is our like creating a data pipeline. Now Kafka part is done. I'm getting some string. Now how this is application I built in a Scala. And I am listing on this topic, providing a broken list here. And I should get that stream, which uh, this type of stream. And I want to do the transformation. Okay, stream by stream, on every stream, uh, not specific line, filtering firstly, then getting a particular value. Now, firstly, I have to build it. I have to create a ZAR file. Then I would be able to use this with a Spark Summit. So for building that application, I will use SPT. But before that, let me close it. You have to also provide all over the dependencies library dependencies. As you are doing the same with the Maven POM file, okay, 
this is a small file you are providing, which is the name of application, a Kafka, Spark Kafka. This is an artifact name, an artifact ID, okay, with a version, Scala version. So what version you are providing here, it will automatically map as per the dependencies. Suppose I am using a Kafka Spark Core, okay, and I am using a older version, but I am using a Scala, the latest version. So it will automatically map with my that dependencies. So I am using a Spark Core, Spark SQL, Spark Hive, Spark Streaming, Spark Streaming Kafka, Spark Streaming Flume, Spark Mlib. This is I am using as as a Mlib. This is not required here, okay? So Scala test, Hadoop code I'm using because I'm uh, ingesting some data from a Hadoop, okay? This Kafka I'm using. So this is this is this is a like simple view how you can create a build file and define like three or four properties here. Guys, any doubt in this, you can ask. This will be named as build.spt. So this should be, extension should be at SPT. But the name of a build, in place of build, you can write anything. Compile.spt or anything. Yes, any, any questions? Okay, now I'm building an application using SPT. Okay, cleaning for cleaning all the older metadata formations, but if I will do clean, it will take time to download all our jar. So I will use compile here. So my application has been compiled. Now I'm doing the package. It will, the package command with the SPT, it will create a jar package of my Scala application. This so package is created. So always package will be created in a target file. Okay, so this is my output jar file. Now I have to check what is in it, my, uh, what are the classes are included in this jar. I can also check with the jar, type in TBF. So all, or the stream is included there. Okay, so my anonymous function also used there. So this I will call only audit string. Now uh, I think I have already run this command. Spark submit. So yeah. So this is how we can run our Scala application with the Spark application, right? So Spark submit I have used, and this class this is required here. If you not provide, then it will throw error. You have to provide your driver class. So driver class is auto train. Then verbose, uh, verbose is for checking all of the internal informations, like the configurations, what are the configurations sent over there, and you can also debug. If if you are getting some error, you can also debug here. And the driver memory I'm providing only 512 MB. Okay, for the testing only, executor me memory, executor's number, executed code. So code is like CPU cores. Okay. How many number of executors I'm using? 
that means how many nodes I am using here and number of worker nodes. The executed code here is suppose uh, one of my executor server or worker node have 16 cores. Okay, out of the 16 cores, I am using only two cores. Okay, for this application, so I will dedicatedly define two cores for this specific application. And then I am providing my present working directory and the uh, path of my jar file. I'm running it. Okay, so all over the configurations has been set. File, executor core. So this is my streaming in progress. I'm not getting any stream here. Yeah, so this is transform. This is the output of my program. This is a Spark streaming example. Okay. So this is transforming live streaming. It will not storm. It will always be behave like a hunger for stream until I will do control C. That means kill my application. So it will be kind of demo process. <coughs> 